It's another beautiful day to talk sport on New Central TV. Here we bring you weekend action coming all the way from the African Games ongoing in Ghana and on the domestic scene, especially on the continental scene. Football looking so good. International friendlies, that rivalry over there, which Jalof is, um, you know, most delicious and which Jalof works best. We've been able to settle that score in the game played between Nigeria and Ghana in Marrakesh. These and many more on the show. I am Uninyechi Obara, and this is In the Game. You can join the conversation, get to follow, like our social media platforms at News Central TV. Do not forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel. Engage the hashtag In the Game because we have, of course, six time continental champion in badminton. He will be joining us later on on the show. But before we go deeper, let's give you our top five stories making the rounds in the world of sport. I will start off from boxing where Anthony Joshua might have proven his worth for another shot at a championship fight. But for now, it seems like the IBF belt will not be something he can fight for. Unified heavyweight champion Lysander Usyk currently holds the IBF belt that he bagged in 2021 uh, after that defeating Anthony Joshua in two fights. Next in line on the sanctioning bodies list is the Croatian heavyweight Filip Hagovic. Ahead of the Francis Ngannou clash, Anthony Joshua's promoter Eddie Hearn had stated that his fighter will next be getting an inch towards that IBF belt, potentially to face off against Hagovic to become the IBF mandatory challenger. However, now Dana Dubois has entered the picture, potentially dampening Anthony Joshua's chances at getting a title fight this year. So with all the fights that have been lined up and Anthony Joshua has conquered, his chance to get the IBF once again away from Alexander Usyk is a bit slim. We'll be hoping that there will be an open door for Anthony Joshua to become the world champion again in the world of boxing. Moving away from that, only few can muster strength to surpass what Usyk both did in his career. However, matching the legacy of the eight-time Olympic gold medalist remains an eternal pursuit for athletes around the world, and no allies is not different. Of course, the six-time world champion has made it abundantly clear that he will be eyeing gold medals in all four men's events later in the year. And it looks like um, the Jamaican legend can't keep ignoring Noah Lies and his ambition to scuttle that record that he created in sprint. The road to the top is a steep climb, but Noah Lies remains confident in his prowess to unstop um, Boat's throne. With the road to Paris 2024 gaining more momentum every day, Boat seems to be becoming a believer in Noah Lai's bold statement, and the fans also are heeding to that dream as well. Let's listen to Usain Boat and what he had to say about Noah Lai's ambition to scuttle his record. I say that he, he can, uh, you know what I mean? I think where it becomes difficult is the next four years. That's, that's when it becomes, when you have to do it back to back to back, that's when it becomes the issue. Um, doing it once is it's never an issue. Many people have won medals, but like one off. But when you do, when you have to do back to back, that when it comes. And he's shown that he's training hard, he's been working good, he's shown a lot of potential, and I'm um, in no doubt he's gonna do great things going forward. Can no one lies do this in Paris 2024? Isn't both already shaky about his stance that nobody can score to that record? Let's wait until athletes get on the way in the French capital. All right, let's go to African Games right now in the top five, where women's world 3,000 meter steeplechase record holder, Beatrice Chepkoic, she raced in the 5,000 meters on day two of um, the African Games. She settled for fourth position, but she returned to the track to stamp her authority in her in a signature event. Of course, Kenya's world silver medalist from Budapest took charge after the first lap, with Uganda's Olympic champion, Peruj Jemutai, Following closely behind her, leaving no room for Ethiopian trio of Loma Mutleta, Sambo Almeleau, and Farawat Gese to incinerate that um, rank. It wasn't long before Chepkoit and Chimutai distanced themselves from the rest of the field, and Chepkoit ran with intent, maintaining her lead to cross the finish line in a championship record of 9.1561 milliseconds, erasing that previous mark set by her compatriot. Zoo, 
um, Bursibari in 2007. Camera time, she took silver at 91607 milliseconds, finishing almost 10 seconds ahead of Muleta in third. Breaking the records, that's what um, sports East African long distance runners, they know how to do best. And Chep Coit has been able to prove that at the African Games. Let's move away from here, take you to tennis right now, where world number two, Arena Sabalenka, she started her Miami Open campaign after an emotional week with a 6-4, 6-3 win over close friend, Paolo de Bosa. Of course, two-time Australian Open champion, Sabalenka, played her second round match four days after the death of her former partner, Konstantin Kotsov. Kotsov, an ex-ice hockey player, died in Miami age 42 in what police describe as an apparent suicide. Belarusian Sabalenka plays Ukraine's Anahena Kalinina on Saturday. On Wednesday, we had Sabalenka did say that her heart is broken after Kutso's death, and she described it as an unthinkable tragedy for her. She's bouncing back. Sport can be a healing stream for Sabalenka. She has been able to win her first match at the Miami Open. We're hoping that um, she can take the same momentum, putting past her grief, and go all the way in Miami Open. It's a big one. We'll give her flowers for even coming out even after that um, demise of her boyfriend to play at the Miami Open. May the gentle soul of her boyfriend, God served, rest in perfect peace. Wrapping up the top five story, taking you to the grid where Max Verstappen, he fended up a fierce challenge from returning Kalitsan to maintaining his perfect start for the 2024 season in Australian Grand Prix qualifying. But there was fresh 2024 disappointment for Lewis Hamilton, he failed to make the... Carlos Sainz in second on the front row. And Sergio Perez completing the top three. Lando Norris gives McLaren their best start of the season. Charles Leclerc had that moment when he bailed out of his final run. Max Verstappen will have to watch us for Khaled Sands Ferrari as he will be trailing him in that Australian Open Grand Prix final. All right, he takes pole position right now. We can't wait to see what the final will look like. Today. There you have it, our top five stories making the rounds in the world of sport. I will return with more updates in the world of sport, but we'll have in the house six time continental champion in the world of badminton in the studio. So don't go anywhere, keep a tab with us on In the Game. Welcome back, you're still watching In The Game. If you just joined us, I am Uninyekchi Obaro. You missed our top five stories, but you can get more. Get to follow like our social media platforms at News Central TV. Do not forget to subscribe to the YouTube channel. Then engage the hashtag In The Game to join the conversation because we want to feel your feedback. We are streaming live right now on Facebook, so catch up, join the train. Now it's time to talk about the wins, the trials, the games of the African Games. And we'll be going to badminton today. So Africa's top-ranked badminton player, Anuolua Kpo Okoyori, he emerged winner of the African Games men's singles title for a third time in a row for that 2024 All-African Games Senior Badminton Championship. Of course, uh, we saw Anu going all out on the court for badminton in the Games in Ghana. Uh, we have, um, he was previously the African champion for 2022 and 2023 before he made it three consecutive wins in Egypt on February 18, 2024. So he had also won the AASC men's singles title in 2019 in Prakut and also the African Games in Morocco in 2019. Okoyori added cherry to the cake when in an historic men's singles final that had two Nigerians of course, we were guaranteed either silver or gold. But the question was, who would be the gold medalist? It all became Anuolu Apo, Poyori, picking up gold, defeating his compatriot, Godwin Olufua, in that men's badminton singles final. Poyori now has successfully defended yeah, no, his Poyori title. He further cement his place as the number one ranked badminton player in Africa and in Nigeria. Ladies and gentlemen, watching all the way, wherever you're watching from, I've got six-time continental champion, 
Africa's number one, Nigeria number one badminton player in the studio, and Nuolua Four of Bayori. Thank you so much for being here today. Thank you very much. You know, it's, it's always a big deal to bring in six-time African champion, you know? Yeah. <laughs> six-time African champion. I'm um, so proud of you. <laughs> Come you on, see, much. just see the, the gold and silver <laughs> on your neck. You're too proud. You, you carry it. You should be proud anyway. Yeah. Thank you for being on the show today. Thank it's you nice to much. have you. I, I know you had to go um, through a lot of games to clinch this title. How yeah. did it feel for you at the African Games, you know, having to defend your title? Um, I think um, I was very, I'm very happy, uh, as I said, because uh, looking at what I've went through during the game, mm -hmm. uh, it was quite uh, a rough road for me because uh, starting from the beginning of parties, I wasn't really feeling the best of my game. Mm -hmm. So um, every match that I played, even playing against Kenya, and it was like it was supposed to be a chief match, like because they are not that very good, but like it was looking very uh, uncomfortable for me. Mm -hmm. But from the start to the end, I just have to fight through and. Uh, I just told myself that uh, no matter what, you just have the art to keep on fighting and uh, believe in yourself. So winning it is like a very, uh, it's like I feel very much achieved. Yes, it. big achievement there. I can see it hanging over your neck. But you, you, you now have six titles, six continental titles to your name. Did any of those matches you had to play and root to you, you know, defending your title, take a toll on you? Because I did see you at the time in that final, you know, you're strapping your shoulders. Yeah. Did it take a toll? Yeah. It took a lot of tolls because, uh, you know, I've been playing from Egypt to Uganda down to uh, back to um, Ghana. Mm -hmm. uh, in Egypt, uh, I have, uh, I have uh, quite a tough match because in, in it, uh, there's a um, slow, um, the weather is quite slow. So um, it's not like business, like when you smash, you kind of um, get the point easily. So yeah, so it was just like that. Well, you're strapping your shoulders, why? Yeah, because uh, you know, uh, when you keep on smashing and keep on eating the shuttle um, several times, every time, uh, it takes a lot of tools in, on your shoulder, your hand, even my body. And even- uh, So you have to play with the pain. Yes, you just have to manage the pain. and. Even when you are exhausted, because every match that I played, uh, starting from the quarterfinal to the semifinal and the finals, it was um, quite a long, a long match. Mm. So I think on an average of 45 minutes on each match, and that is on the high speed, on high pace. Mm. It's quite uh, a lot for me. Even judging from the even Uganda that I played, because I played a lot of Europeans too there. So playing those people. Uh, take a lot on me, like I was fatigued from there, but you know, I just, um, so because it's important for my Olympic qualification, so I have to fight through every match in the game, and I mean, it's just what I have to do. <laughs> <laughs> what you have to do, you know, I've been very, very, very you know, concerned about experienced players. Mm -hmm. They've learned the art to play even with pain. Yeah. I see Novak Djokovic in the world of tennis. I see Rafael Nadal in the world of tennis. They carry injuries and they still play. Yeah. How do you do it? <laughs> and with one person here that can help me, you know, <laughs> or not that, that um, you know, luck, I need to know how do you do it, playing with injury? You are strapping your shoulders mm -hmm. and you want the gold medal. Yeah. How do you do it? Uh, yeah, so the first thing is uh, you have to first believe in yourself. Uh, that is the most important key to everything. And uh, like uh, our psychologist said before going to Egypt, he said everything is uh, it's telepathy. Mm -hmm. So it's how you communicate to yourself on the court that we uh, enable you to be able to perform very well. Mm -hmm. So strapping my shoulder, I was feeling pain and everything, truly. But when the adrenaline kicks in, I tend to forget. The adrenaline is telling you gold medal is <laughs> on the way. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so I tend to forget much about all this pain and everything. So um, even sometimes in 2022, yeah. I was I had a shin splint. So why in the tournament? Oh. So and I still won it. So wow, <laughs> wow, I knew. Hey, that's yeah, cool. So, yeah. So like uh, like uh, dealing with injury on the court and even outside the court, uh, we we tend to uh, like um, just accept the pain like that. Mm. So and um, have a bigger mind. 
bigger picture, yeah, right? setting so, your mind on that. So setting, just set the goal and uh, no matter how you the road is or something like that, you know, you will still get there. And your main goal is just the good. And once you are able to get the good, it is worth it. Hmm. I, I, I'm so jealous. Maybe I need a gold medal too because I've gone through a lot, you know. But uh, let me tell you, I need to reveal to you that three Nigerians made it to the, um, they, they were guaranteed gold, silver, and bronze at the badminton event, the singles event of this competition. Now, when we had the finals, seeing the likes of um, Anulua Kwokweori and Godwin Olofua, I was so happy because I knew we were guaranteed one gold and one silver. I know. Was there at any time when you had played um, Olofua, because he led in the first set, Yeah. was there at any time you felt, this gold medal will slip away from my hands? <laughs> yeah, um, so at every point, uh, even the second game, it was even more, more of a pressure for me, because we were like on tie, and at some point he was even leading like two points yes. ahead of me. Yes. So uh, I was like, whatever will be, will be, because uh, I needed that point to, um, to secure a very good position for my um, for my Olympic um, qualification. Okay. So uh, I was like, whatever will be, will be. Just keep on fighting. You don't know what will happen next. So we just keep on fighting. Just keep on fighting. That was what I was. But the gold myself. or silver would have still landed for Nigeria. You yeah. What is the gold? I, I wanted the gold because uh, it's not just about the gold now. Okay. To me, it's about the points. Uh, mm -hmm. Because uh, the more I win, the more. Um, point like we use a point system in badminton so if i got that point i'll be like now i'm like 2000 ahead of my um uh, competitors in africa mm -hmm. uh those who are qualifying from africa but you know um i want to be the first to qualify so i want to be that continental representation that will be the first because it will be on record that uh, i qualify first you don't qualify first because all the other olympics is always like one spot for africa so um, that is what I want, mm -hmm. and that is what I want to achieve, and that is why I was fighting. You see, everybody wants to be first in everything. <laughs> New Central here, we are first with African stories, so Africa first for us. We are in the same, you know, right. <laughs> we're on the same <laughs> line, yeah. you know, paddling the same boat there. But I, I would love to know if um, you got silver in the men's doubles. Yes. Um, do you feel the struggle you had to go through, the pain you went through having to... Um, defend your title in the men's singles took a toll on you, you know, dropping your game in the doubles because I was looking for gold, you know, <laughs> or you settled for silver. Do you think that struggle took a toll on you getting gold for the men's double? Uh, okay, yeah, I think uh, you might be right on that part. Okay. Uh, because uh, playing the singles actually took a uh, lot of energy, drained a lot of energy from you me. You played the singles before the doubles yes. final, yes. So, um, um, technically speaking, from an expert view, um, Thank you. <laughs> Go uh, on there. Um, playing singles is just uh, is exhausting okay. on its own. Okay. What yeah. makes it that exhausting? Uh, because I mean, you are the only one like uh, going back and forth, no mm -hmm. partner to support you or okay. something. Okay. Yeah. Though in um, in uh, like uh, we what like uh, let's say top hundred and top ten in the world, mm -hmm. playing doubles is also very very exhausting because they are faster, like the kind of energy and rallies are much and stuff like that. Mm. But singles is more, more, way more exhausting because you have to have this energy, you have to have this endurance and everything. So playing, playing it for that long and playing against someone that knows your game is super exhausting. So um, after playing, both of us after playing, we were so tired and uh, the doubles players, they didn't play anything. Mm. Uh, they only played uh, mixed doubles. Okay. And uh, one of them is even uh, only played the doubles only. Okay. He didn't play singles. He was, he's also a singles player, like okay. half singles and stuff like that. But he didn't play the singles. He only just focused on the doubles in this tournament. Yeah, I remember. That's um, I think the exactly. Algerian yes. player. I remember the Algerian player. He knew he, what he wanted for the doubles. Yes. That's why he dropped down from the men's singles. <laughs> yes. But I, I'm I'm really happy that you played the men's. Um, singles mm. and played the men's doubles and you were home with brothers. Who is better? You're better. I am better. Ah, you're better. <laughs> so um, let's talk about the toughest opponent at the African Games that you, mm. were, you were faced off with. Okay. So Who was that? Uh, I think uh, it's the Algerian right there mm. because uh, at that point that I was playing against him, I wasn't, re I wasn't me at all. Like, 
I was, uh, it's, uh, I mean, in the singles event. Okay, okay. So, um, he was. Okay, he didn't give his best in the singles event. That's what you mean? Me, me, actually, me. Okay. Yeah, he's actually a very tricky player because mm -hmm. um, he's kind of, um, uh, we have a different style in badminton. Okay. So, when you are playing against such person, you have to be like super fast. And mm -hmm. at that point, I was not, I cannot go fast because uh, I was still kind of, um, trying to be into the game, trying okay. to gain the to moment, momentum, momentum and yeah. stuff like that. But uh, it, that's what actually um, took me off when playing him because he's kind of a deceptive player. And oh. Yeah, so playing him, you have to be like, wait for him, then move fast. And I mean, I wasn't in that, uh, that position. The only thing I used against him was that I kind of uh, make sure that it, it, uh, we both struggle for the points and everything. Mm -hmm. So I made a lot of mistakes while trying, trying to do that, but okay. I mean, I expanded a lot of energy, but I'm fitter and I have the experience, of course. He also has, he also has the experience, but I mean, I mean, I have the art, the bigger art. Yes, so. you do. <laughs> <laughs> I'm here to celebrate you on the show. But um, I know you're racking up points for the Olympics. Yes, yes he's racking up points and he is in a very advantageous position because he is the Africa's uh, number one, Nigeria's number one, has been able to rack up points ahead of the Paris 2024 Olympics. Now, would these points put you in an advantageous position uh, ahead of um, Paris 2024 badminton men's singles? Would you play the doubles too? Uh, no, um, this time I'm only focusing on the singles. Okay. Yeah, so unlike uh, 2020, I focus on both, but eventually my doubles ranking was way higher. I mm -hmm. could enter like super like super 1000 tournament mm -hmm. and my singles ranking cannot so i just left the singles out then i could have qualified for both so but this time i'm i'm focusing on the singles and uh, right now i'm at the top uh top uh ranking so uh i mean it's just uh it's just the best for me because okay. uh, the points i'm using to um to um between us okay. uh, me and uh other competitors, it's quite very big because uh, it might be just 2,000, but um, they have, we have a limited, uh, we have a kind of a, a base, okay. so we like uh, 10 count tournament. So even if you go for like 20 tournament, um, they will only count 10 tournament for you. Okay. So uh, with, in my 10 tournament, I still have like kind of lowest points wow. that I can still, if I should go for tournament, and I made it to like, maybe 920 points or something. Oh. So that would be like kind of uh, maybe quarter final in the lowest tournament. If I should do that, I mean. Even, with your, even with your rank? Yeah. As Africa's number one? No, I mean. be at that pecking order? Yeah, no, I mean, uh, I have a very good point. That's what I mean. Okay, so okay. unlike the others that uh, they have kind of um, international challenge oh. round of 32. So for us, for me, I still have like lower points. So if I should go for tournament, for the 10 counts, I can still like add more points to mine. But to th for them, it is very, very difficult okay. to add more points. So it's easier for you. Yeah. Great one. I, that, that's what I want to hear with all this. <laughs> You've been able to break down. So what are your expectations? What should we expect from Anolu Akpo of Fayori at the Paris 2024 Olympics? Well, um, uh, this is the first thing that my goal is in the 2024 Olympics. I'm looking forward to win uh, a match. Yeah. A March, a March, not two, not three. A March first, because uh, not in history that any African player have won a match. So we uh, want to start like taking a step first. So uh, looking at that, you, know, or you can also create a goal for yourself. Mm -hmm. So want to win a match, uh, no matter. Though don't play for the like world number one or world number two or something like that. Mm -hmm. But even if I'm playing against them. I want to win a match, and that match is very, very important. Out of everything, because uh, once I'm, I'm able to do that, it shows and or give African much higher hope that we can do this. We can also like compete with with the old world and like Asia and stuff like that. So that is my main goal, and I want to do that so that uh, we can move forward. Um, I must be honest with you. Um, in uh, this Uganda that I went to and I got to semi-final, it was a very good uh, achievement for us. Yes, because first time, Yeah, I remember. Yeah, so um, the African um, 
officials were very happy. They were like, um, this is the first time that an African is getting to the semi-final. So like, it is quite um, something that they want to achieve, and they are happy to achieve it. So it will make our movement going forward easier. And like, it could bring like, sponsors and stuff like that, easy and stuff like that. So okay. yeah, and people will not look down on Africa that we are not strong and stuff like that. So yeah, me going out there is to make sure that to tell them that I'm going to dominate this thing. So don't don't just sleep and be idle. Watch out for Anu Olua Pok, where Yori, he's going to dominate in Paris 2024. He made history in Uganda, having to make it, make it to the quarterfinal of the, the men's singles, and then surpass that, going to the semifinal. So Paris, Anu is coming. Yeah. I know it's coming. All right, let, let me just wrap up this conversation. We're pressed for time. What's the future of badminton in Nigeria? Uh, I, what do you see? I think it's uh, very bright because uh, uh, um, the children that are, um, sorry, the younger ones that okay. are coming up now, uh, they are like um, very, very strong. I can see um, um, my type in them, and uh, they are like clone me. <laughs> yeah. So. Yeah, I mean, there's a particular one that he got to semi-final like two times, and this is his first tournament. Who's, African, the, who's the person? Uh, Victor Ikechuku. Yes, yeah, I did so, see him in the African game. Yeah, so he, African Championship, he got to semi-final, and I was the only one that was able to beat him out. So in uh, sem in, in Ghana also, he got to a semi-final. So this gave me a lot of confidence that uh, like the future is bright for the, um, badminton in Nigeria. And also, like... In the girls category, like they are also doing very well, mm -hmm. and I'm looking forward to like much more achievement from them also. Mm -hmm. So in the boys, I have no problem. Like, I mean, it, apart from me, uh, there's also Godwin, and there's also like uh, Ima. Um, there's another one, Ima. Just are so talented players. So, I mean, what about I'm the very ladies? Confident. Do you see a future for the ladies? Um, Adi Shokan, I did see that she won bronze, yeah. and. She was um, hoping to get the gold medal, but yeah. she had to settle for bronze. What's the future for the ladies? Uh, I think it's also achievable uh, for them. So um, they just need to work hard and uh, up their game to the level of the men. Okay. So, and then I think it's achievable. Okay. All yeah. right. We'll be hoping to hope that up for badminton in Nigeria. And Anuluak Bokoyori is an evidence that... Um, um, the Badminton Federation of Nigeria is doing something wonderful in this sport. I know I've done something good. I didn't go to Ghana, but I can feel Ghana. Are you next? Yeah, so yeah. can you please <laughs> let me feel Ghana here too? <laughs> yeah, sure. Thank you. No, come, 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 come. Oh, yeah. Honor me. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, thank you so much. Woo! This is beautiful. I, it's heavy. Uh, yes, I told you. <laughs> I have a gold medal spot journalist that brought in Anuolua for Kweyori. So I have gold for myself and I've got <laughs> silver for myself. Thank you so much. We've been talking to Africa's number one badminton player, Nigeria number one badminton player, Anuolua for Kweyori. Thank you so much for being on the show today. I'm hoping that when you dominate in Paris 2024, you'll be here yes. to celebrate that with us. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you for coming, Anu. Great to have you on the show. All right, we go on a short break. I still got this dangling on my neck over here. We go on a short break. And when we come back, of course, we are going deeper into the world of sport. Do not go anywhere. And the game continues. Welcome back. You're still watching In the Game. Did you miss that conversation with Africa and Nigeria's number one? Then you can catch up, get to follow, like our social media platforms and New Central TV. Subscribe to our YouTube channel, hashtag in the game. Join the conversation. You can throw your questions. I'm ready to send them down to Africa and Nigeria's number one. All right, let's bring an update from the African Games. Nigerian making the showings in Ghana are showing doings. They are doings over there in Ghana. The four by 400 Meter relay team came with a surprise on the day. Nigeria won the gold medal in that race and they did not disappoint winning Nigeria's last gold for athletics events in Accra, Ghana. Of course, um, the quartet of Esther Elo Joseph, Patience Okon John or George, who was um, in the four by 100 mixed relays, and also Brittany Ogumokun 
Omo Lara, Omo Tosho, that lady who pallied Nigeria in the mixed relays to. She was in action for the 4x400. Their combined youth and experience were able to give Nigeria, give Nigeria that last gold medal in Accra, Ghana for the athletics event. Away from here, history was also made in the men's 200 meters uh, event where Ghana's Joseph Paul Amoa, he made history after winning gold in the men's 200 meters final at the African Games. Now, I would say the competition, it, he had to surpass competition from Cameroon and Nigeria in that 200 meter sprint event. Netizens, they celebrated Amoa after uh, he picked the first medal since 1970. Three for Ghana in the men's 200 meters event. Athletics is a bit interesting, I would say, at the African Games. But let's see what the final standing looks like. Nigeria, a stronghold at the African Games. You, they do not want to miss the top position in the final standing of the African Games medal table. Nigeria stands strong in number one for the athletics event. In the African Games, of course, they amassed a total of 22 medals, 11 gold. Remember that Chidi Okezie picked gold. Uh, the likes of the 4x100 meters relating picked gold. 4x100 meters women's team, they picked gold. Toby Amosa, she picked gold in the women's huddles event. Uh, we had Amechi Obiageri picking gold also in the women's discourse. Then Javelin Tro. <laughs> We have a new athlete for Nigeria who picked gold in the javelin throw, and that amassed 11 gold medals for Nigeria in the athletics event. So Nigeria maintained their stronghold at the African Games in athletics, finishing number one at the final standing. All right, let's move to boxing right now. Eight Nigerians were able to live up to expectation. Eight gold medals, that's what Nigeria got in the boxing event at the ongoing African Games. Nigerians, they channel their energy in that full squared rope, launching out the punches there, giving it to their opponent with all in their heart. They had to pour it out in the full squared rope over there. Um, the likes of um, Onyekwere Ifani, he was the first person who won, went into the full squared rope to channel his energy to his opponent over there. And he was dominant, finishing with a gold medal in his weight category. He earned the eighth gold medal for Nigeria to cap up the boxing event at the African Games. But for Nyekwere, she also was dominant in her own discipline. Uh, let's hear what um, one of the boxers had to say after delivering so much gold for Nigeria. For me to win the gold medal is, um, I'm very, very happy and I want to say thank you to all my fans. And my boxing career too, I've been working so hard, so I'm very sure that I'm going to um, because I promised myself that I'm going to be the gold medalist, so that's it. I fought with um, um, silver medalist, Ojo Nene over there, so happy about her achievement at the African Games. You don't want to test that girl, huh? She will go all out on your face if you test her anytime you see her on the streets of Lagos. All right, there, the boxing event. Nigeria scooped eight gold medals in the boxing event of the African Games. But let's go right now, having to reel out the men's football event. The third place result there between Senegal and Congo. So we had Senegal finishing with the third place after a 2 0 defeat um, to 2 0 victory. I beg your pardon, the hands of um, Congo. Ghana were dominant. The ladies, under 20 ladies, picked up gold. The under-20 men had to come at cherry to the cake that um, was prepared by the under-20 ladies. They also defeated Uganda. I beg your pardon for that result there. Um, Ghana finished 1-0 against Uganda in the men's football event. All right, moving away from here to handball, where the third place match between Cameroon and Algeria. Cameroon were dominant 29-21 to against Algeria. Then the winners for the day, Angola, finishing 33 to 15 Team against the Arab Congo. In the men's handball resort, four place match, Benin Republic against Nigeria. Nigeria there, of course, they picked bronze. The Golden Arrows settled for bronze. Why well, today we should expect, or maybe we have the results already um, for the Arab Congo and Egypt. In the women's hockey, Ghana finished ahead of Nigeria. 4-3 uh, in that encounter there. So the Jalof Derby, it was Ghana who had plus one here. So we'll be hoping that 
they can go all out um, in this encounter as they are the host nation. Uh, moving for, to the men's hockey there, Nigeria and Kenya. Nigeria were dominant 2-1 against Kenya. And the final between Ghana and Egypt. Egypt were dominant. They picked gold ahead of Ghana. In the women's volleyball event, we have Kenya and Egypt. Slugging it out there, but Egypt had the final say. Tunisia had the final say against Ghana in the women's volleyball event. The men's volleyball saw Kenya going out against Cameroon. A dominant win there. Egypt's dominant win against Ghana in the men's event. Why cricket? We are waiting the results will tell today. Uganda up against Kenya and um, for the third place match while Namibia and Zimbabwe would slog it out for the final. Away from here, the Kosafa Beach Championship, we have it has climaxed to the third place and the final match. A big surprise for Malawi. Malawi could not make it to the final of the event, but they will have to face up with Saudi um, today in the third place fixture of um, the Kosafa Big Championship. So the Kosafa team had to make this an open one to, to welcome um, teams that will be able to prepare their national teams for the FIFA Continental Competition or International Meets for Beach Soccer. So Malawi will have to go down today for the third place match and the final will be between Morocco and Mozambique. Moving away from here, let's go to football. Al Sata from the Super Eagles of Nigeria. They defeated the Black Stars of Ghana 2-1 in an international friendly in Marrakesh, Morocco. Cyril Dessas and Ademola Lukman, they were the two goal scorers for Nigeria as Jordan Ayew pulled a goal back for the Black Stars in stoppage time. Dessas opened the scoring in the 37th minute through a penalty kick after Kelechi Ihana chose short, was handled inside the box by a Ghanaian player. Lukman then scored a fantastic goal after converting an excellent assist from Alex Wobi. Meanwhile, Ghana's captain, John Anayu, scored a goal from the penalty spot in stoppage time, reducing the deficit to one. From the 56 minutes, Ghana were forced to play a man short after a poku was sent off. He was issued a red card you know, after that foul. Let's listen to reactions coming from the game as the uh, Nigerian Super Eagles has been able to deliver and settle that score between Ghana, picking their first win against Ghana since 2006. The coach, Cyril Dessas, they have things to say after this encounter. Not too much at the positive because we lost. At the end, it's the result we lost. I think we were a little bit unlucky how we considered the goal. Uh, thing hit the, the hand, uh, but like I said, we're really unlucky. And um, first half, I think they had the better chances, but second half, we really did well. Now, if you want to come to the positive uh, side, uh, I feel happy. I feel happy. It's not easy, you know, the rivalry between Nigeria and Ghana. So, um, you know, coming here to win this, uh, this game is um, a good one for me. I think uh, we played with. Uh, um, 3 5 2, uh, but in the half corner, you see it's only Osime, and we, we felt he was doing so much running alone. So, at least I wanted some other player to do that. That pair at least will help. You know? So, we could see once a player gets the ball, there's an opportunity for a pass. You know? So, uh, we had to risk it somewhere, but um, we, ha we have to get something going for the coaches there, their reaction after that Jalof Derby, Nigeria up against Ghana. All right, I've got a football analyst in the studio here with me, uh, Kuro Taminoye Hansen. Kuro, or Kotams, as you did say. <laughs> I'm so sorry, please forgive me, Kuro Taminoye. Am I correct? Again? Kuro Taminoye. Nearly. Almost all right. Almost okay. Done. Thank God. This is not a name <laughs> battle, but it's all good. Thank you so much for being um, with us on the show today. So uh, the Jalof Derby has been settled since 2006. Um, Super Eagles of Nigeria have not been able to get a win against the Ghana Black Stars. But in that encounter, Finiti George, who was standing in as a coach, Terim, yeah. for the Super Eagles of Nigeria, played a 3-5-2 formation. But the Eagles were not still able to press. What was your reaction to that result and uh, the performance of the Eagles after the African Cup of Nations? Well, um, I'll start with the last question. Okay. I think for the Super Eagles, a lot of persons, a lot of persons have been uh, ungrateful with mm. our um, performances during the African. A lot of persons didn't expect us to get that far. Okay. And then when we got that far, 
everyone's expectation was now, like, okay, win the tournament. And then in the, with the fashion we lost, a lot of persons have been, I think, harsh on the team. Why do you say so? Because um, this team was assembled in little or no time. We were we are aware of how many um, players go into the likes of Sadiq Kumar, Boniface, and I think one other striker again, almost like three or four days to the tournament. Mm. And then, yes, we have huge expectations as Nigerians, but I mean, if you put all these facts together, you should be able to understand why the team may not be able to perform at its ultimate best. Mm -hmm. But yes, people will still be like, ah, they're not playing well, they don't press well, they don't play beautiful ball. Forgetting that it's a tournament of, um, competition, it's not about who plays the beautiful game, it's about but, how... But this is an international friendly, and you know it's a rivalry. So yes. we, don't, we want to come with our guns blazing in an encounter okay. against um, Ghana. Okay. Now, Otoado returns to Ghana, remember, yes. and we have an interim coach, which is Finiti George, having mm -hmm. to coach the team um, to their first international friendly against um, Ghana. Yeah. Now, um, Finiti George did take this team, lead this team without a technical crew. Yeah. He, because it has not been settled after the sacking of Joseph Pusiero. Yeah, now, you're saying he should be given thumbs up for this performance of the Super Eagles against Ghana in this encounter? I may not be, have been impressed with um, how we played, okay. but for the fact that it's his first game, and trust me, no manager wants to play his first game against Ghana okay. if you're in charge of Nigeria. Okay, he made some, some um, you know, he gave some players a starting berth there, Onyelichi, yeah. we did see over there, Bruno. Benjamin. And um, how was your performance? Of Bruno. Yeah, Onye Machia. I, all I think I was impressed because. Did he also return? Indeed, I was super impressed with him because okay. he showed us what we missed in the African that leadership, that composure in the middle of the park. And then Bruno Yemechitsu also. I, I found as in clamoring for him to start on the left hand so side he of was, the fence it was because he was on okay. The day. Um, for the other guy, um, the Bendel Insurance guy, Benjamin Taminu, yeah. I was also impressed because. Um, for the fact that there was pressure to play local base players and yes. then he was featured and then he did fine. Okay. So I think I was impressed generally with the fact that we won. Okay. But like I said, I'm not particularly impressed with the fact that we, we didn't play well because we pressed Ghana the first half and then some point Ghana, even with red card, you have to press us to ball. I think I will take solace in the fact that it's a win. It's a job they're doing. A friendly game against Ghana, there's nothing friendly about it, trust me. So I will take a scrappy win over Ghana any day, any time. Hmm. And then not forgetting the fact that they made us not to go to the World Cup. Okay. You understand? So okay. We could be pressed for time right now, but quickly, in in few seconds, please, do you yeah. think the NFF should give Finity George a contract in few seconds, please? I don't know how I can do this in a few seconds now because I don't, I'm not a fan please, of please local coaches. Please just do it in a few seconds. I'm not a fan of domestic time. coaches, but I feel he should be given the chance because he has been, he has stayed the longest with the squad, okay. um, bearing Jose Pesero, and then he's a man He's in and in. He has been in the system for a long time. So okay. I feel instead of going all far searching for a coach, I think we should just give him a try and then see how far he goes. Okay, see how far he goes from um, Hansen over here in the studio. So call give us that um, Kuro Terminal. <laughs> 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 all right, we have to call it a wrap on the show. Thank you so much um, for being on the show today. Kuro Terminal, <laughs> Hansen. It's been an interesting.